Okay, let's now move on, continue our Cold War discussion and talk about Afghanistan. Afghanistan, let me find you guys, uh, let's, let's find a map. Afghanistan is this country right here, next to Iran, Pakistan, and this is Russia, so also very close to Russia during the Soviet Union. These countries here were part of the Soviet Union, so during the Cold War, the Soviet Union bordered on Afghanistan. Okay. Um, and in the 70s, Afghanistan was a more modern country. But they had gotten closer and closer to the Soviet Union and kind of pulled away from the West. Remember, Iran at this point was friends with the US and Britain, so was Iraq. And they kind of buddied up more with the Soviet Union. In 1979, though, the Soviet Union wants to get even closer. Afghanistan says no, and the Soviet Union invades Afghanistan. The US sees this as an opportunity to do to the Soviet Union what the Soviet Union did to the US in Korea and Vietnam, or what the Soviet Union and China did. And they decided to send money and weapons to Afghanistan. There's a movie about this. It's called Charlie Wilson's War. You should check it out. Um, the US gives money to a group called the Mujahideen, Mujahideen that was in part led by a guy named Osama bin Laden, son of a wealthy oil sheik. And the US gives weapons to these people. Now, here's a picture of a newspaper at the time. In the US, that's right, Bin Laden, friend to the US, helping us defeat the Soviet Union in the Cold War. The US gave him shoulder fired Stinger missiles. And the big thing at this point was that. The, on the ground, Afghanistan is very mountainous. It's, it's very mountainous. Um, and the Soviets couldn't come by ground. They don't have like bridges, and good roads. It's a very poor, back, you know, backwards country. Um, and the Soviets would have to fight by air. So they would bring in their helicopters and they would fire on the Afghans, the Mujahideen, who were fighting back against the Soviets. Um, and we gave them Stinger missiles, which are heat-seeking missiles. You can put on your shoulder and you can fire. And by the mid 80s, we had given them enough so that they were starting to shoot down Soviet helicopters at a high clip. And all of a sudden now we're saying, is this the Soviet Vietnam? Are the Soviets gonna lose to a poor little country? Just like we lost to Vietnam, that just, has the home court advantage and wants to fight hard. They want it more than the Soviets. And the answer is yes. The Soviets lose this war. The Soviets pull out, Afghanistan wins, and America feels like this leads the Soviets to collapse a few years later. Um, good job, America, arming those people. They, they did it. A they, they, small group of, of localized fighters were able to defeat the second most powerful country in the world in war. Our enemy, enemy of my enemy is my friend, is, is, a, is a theory that, that was being used at that point. It goes back to World War II when the US teamed up with Stalin against Hitler. Enemy of my enemy is my friend. Thank you, new friend, Afghanistan. But wait, the Afghan government, you can see here meeting with Ronald Reagan in their attempt to get weapons. When you make a group powerful, their power doesn't disappear after the war. So after the war, the group that had taken power in Afghanistan that we had empowered by giving money and weapons was a group that were Islamic fundamentalists that wanted to take Afghanistan and the whole Middle East and move it backwards culturally, pull it away from the West, 
suppress women and um, basically rule extremely strict Islamic version. It's called Wahhabism, which was a Saudi Arabian version of, of strict Islam, um, and implement that in the country. On top of that, Osama bin Laden does not leave. Instead, he sets up terrorist training camps in the Middle East where he trains terrorists to attack his new enemy. And since Russia wasn't his enemy anymore and he had all this money and weapons, he was gonna attack the person who he thought was corrupting his society, who had corrupted his society throughout the 60s and 70s, and be blamed for all of Afghanistan's problems, all of the Middle East's problems, all of the world's problems. And on September 11th, 2001, Osama bin Laden launches a terrorist attack against the United States of America, flying four planes, hijacking four planes with plastic box cutters that got through the metal detectors in the airport. Back then, it was much easier to get on and off planes. Security was so much different. The whole world was so much different, specifically in our country, before this attack. And they hijack these planes, they fly these planes into the Twin Towers in New York. They both collapse, killing 3,000 innocent American citizens who just went to work that day. And also flying a plane into the Pentagon in Washington, D.C., which is our military headquarters. Enemy of my enemy, my friend, just attacked me for the first time since the War of 1812, the U.S. had been attacked. Since, of course, Pearl Harbor was a colony in 1941, okay, maybe some minor submarine attacks during the war, but, oh, no, World War II, but, but this was a big one. The fourth plane, apparently, people on the plane heard about what was happening by cell phone call fought back. Because the thing is that before this, like in the 80s and 90s, sometimes airplanes would be hijacked, but they were never flown into buildings before. If an airplane was hijacked, it would be landed, and they would ask for some money or something. This wasn't good, but it happened. So the people on the planes didn't think they were going to be flown into buildings. They thought that they were going to land and there would, be, there would be hostages, and then eventually they'd be set free. And that is not what happened on that day. The next month, the US, with full UN support, goes to war against Afghanistan, because we first asked ask Afghanistan, will you please give us Osama bin Laden? This guy just attacked us. Afghanistan says, no. And we say, we're going to war with you then. U.S. easily defeats Afghanistan. They, they're a teeny little country with, with no real weapons. Um, here's kind of, you know, thing. U.S. planes fly over a city that doesn't even have two-story buildings. And just, there was no real war targets. They easily won. Um, but the U.S. only brought in like 15, 20,000 soldiers. They didn't bring in the million man, not even 100,000 men. There was no military draft for this war or the Iraq war afterwards. And then the US let, not on purpose, Osama bin Laden escape when they thought they had him quartered in a city called Tora Bora. And he escapes into Pakistan where he lives for the next 10 years and coordinates terrorist attacks and makes videos threatening America and he's an embarrassment to this country. 
America never even secures the peace in Afghanistan. They were able to get the capital city peaceful, but then the, the Taliban, the former government, ran into the hills and was launching terrorist attacks the entire time. Still goes on, there's still not peace there. Oh, Afghanistan. <sighs> Helped the US bring down the Soviet Union. Allowed bin Laden to train, plan terrorist attacks against our country. The worst attacks that hit us since 1812 and changed our country forever. 